Hi. That's how you're starting it. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is a new series of videos we're doing. Um, drunkenly reviewing films. It's probably not going to happen that often, is it? We don't get drunk that often. We see lots of films, yeah. so maybe soberly reviewing films, or maybe pretending to be drunk reviewing films. It's not about <coughs> edit that out. So <laughs> tomorrow's my birthday. Happy birthday to you tomorrow. That's right. Uh, I'm going to be 30. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to that age, but I couldn't get away with it. I'm going to be 30. You've never got to that age. No, no one's ever got to the age where they've that's been acceptable. Oh, now you just spilled my drink. Oh, <laughs> jinkies. So, yeah. so, um, I look like a ghost. Like, I'm very fat. Can you bring it a bit closer? Well, it's really not flattering. That's out. appropriate that you should look like a ghost. No. Because we went to see The Nun today. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> um, so, what was your opinion of I, said film? Um, overall, Go on. hated it. Uh, you said earlier, zero out of ten. Yeah, like, I literally, like, I didn't like it. Not a single redeeming feature. No. I didn't like it, but I can't see why anyone would like it. Like, now, who do you normally, think it's for? Nobody. I don't think that anybody would enjoy it. Like, I think... The cinema was pretty empty, by the way. Like, it's been out six, a while. There were about six people in there. Still. And it was in the middle of the day. But I just think that, you know, it's for people that like horrors, like me. And... I'm a baby, so I don't watch a lot of horrors. But... It was just utter rubbish. The story was just weak. There wasn't really a story. So the story was basically... Spoilers. Um, hashtag spoiler alert. Uh, the sto story was basically um, these nuns opened a door and a spirit broke out. An evil spirit. An evil spirit broke out. And this <coughs> woman was told that, like, basically there needs to be no survivors so the spirit can't escape. So this nun hung herself. And that alerted the Vatican for some reason because some yeah. guy found them. I don't them. even know why. He, the, the guy was like, so someone died. Why did she call me? There was no explanation of that. No, but We still don't know why they called him. Yeah, this random guy um, found the, this dead body. And all of a sudden the Vatican knew about it. Um, also, so the film was set in Romania. And not a single person there spoke Romanian or had a Romanian accent. No. Like, even, even the people that, like, that, so one of the main characters was a French Canadian, French Canadian guy that lived there. So that explained it, why he didn't speak Romanian, but it was just randomly there. But all the nuns that lived there were just like American nuns, just living in Romania. And English. And English, just living in Romania. In just, the 50s. Yeah, which was really stupid. That, I, mean, I mean, that was just, a, that was just logic that didn't make sense. Yeah. And then, um, so the guy got a girl from that that wasn't a nun yet. She hadn't taken her nun vows, but he got this girl from some London, other place, England somewhere, and took her along. Met this other guy who who'd found the dead body. Just went to like see what was going on. A, a, at the a, a French guy, cleverly called Frenchy. So that was creative. That was good. I liked yeah. that. And I thought the whole think? thing about there was supposed to be some sort of chemistry between him and the girl. But there wasn't any? No. So I think we were meant to believe that he was a bit of a player. Because <clears throat> when the, the guy turned up, the guy who's um, a miracle specialist or something, I think he called himself... The only miracle would have been making this film any good. Hi all. Um, so the guy turned up with this younger girl and Frenchie was like, oh, are you an angry husband or an annoyed dad? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Are you an angry husband or an annoyed dad? And he was like, uh, neither. Because I guess he was supposedly... A player. Thought he had had sex with this woman. Yeah. Didn't remember. And she... This, by the way, two seconds after he woke up from a harrowing nightmare about the dead body that he found. Yeah. And he was straight into jokes. Yeah. Totes pants. Yeah. Who's that? If that's... 
a nun, I'm going to be really unhappy. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. So that was the postman at yeah. 7 o'clock at night. So before we were rudely interrupted. Bring it closer. So before we were rudely interrupted. Yeah, there was basically no character development in this film. And you didn't care about anybody because we don't know them. And I feel like in a horror film, if, if someone's in jeopardy, you have to care about them. You have to give a crap and I just didn't because I didn't even know them. Also, spoiler alert, no one died in this film. Like there were three main characters. And again, I feel like in a horror film to add some kind of peril, Someone should die, not just everyone survives scot-free. Someone Some... that you care about should die. Yes, yes. We didn't care about anyone. But no one died anyway. Literally nobody died, apart from a nun who we had only seen for about five minutes anyway. And you heard that a 12-year-old girl hung herself off screen. Yeah. That was just, that was just random. They were just like, oh, yeah, evil's coming out. That bit? They were just saying, oh, evil's leaking out of this, oh. this church. That 12-year-old girl hung herself. And remember that other guy had... Some harrowing experience. It's stupid. It was just like, we can't be bothered to show you that evil's leaking out, but it is. Yeah. Budget constraints limit us <laughs> from showing you the horrible effects of what? this. I don't know what the budget was of this film. 22 million. Okay. That's, that sound, I, like, that's low compared to, like, a Marvel movie, like 200 million. God, it's but still a lot of money. It's still they could lot. hang someone and show us. I believe, like, Hot Fuzz was made for about 10 million. And, a million times better. And that that has like big special effects and things mm. happening and just, I don't know, it's just... It was just a crappy film. And then at the end, there was just like this pool of water in the convent, not explained. I thought, well, I oh, just maybe... My drink. I thought maybe you're supposed to have thought it had been raining and got in. It hadn't been raining. There was no previous shots of rain. You know, because sometimes they do that. If they want to put some water somewhere, you'll hear some rain or a big storm or something. There it's it's no like, like foreshadowing. Yeah. Like there was, there was no foreshadowing to that. Basically, no. they survived all these ridiculous jump scares and things. Yeah, things just kept happening. Like, there was no progression to the story. There was no story. It was, it was like the director thought, Oh, this will be a bit weird and freaky. Let's kind of let's stick that in there somewhere. Oh, oh, but hang on. This could happen as well for no reason. And that will make people I scared. Thought, other than maybe one or two, I saw every jump scare coming. Every single one. I didn't really jump. It, it reminded me of the video game Evil Within that lots of people loved. But to me, there was no really narrative to it. It was basically a case of go here and then something random scary will happen that's just completely random and it didn't make sense like the scares have to come from the situation not mm. just oh we can randomly make this happen and i guess the idea is that the spirit or whatever it was was making people see these things but it was, i don't i don't know it was just terrible it was just a rubbish film i sat there thinking why am i wasting my time watching this i I mean, for us, we have unlimited cards for the cinema, so we thankfully don't pay per view. Basically. I still spend £8.50 on nachos and drinks. Yeah, but they were good. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah, they were really good. But I just thought, if I'd have paid, I I, I mean, we, ha we have paid, but, you know. We've paid with our time. If we'd have paid for that particular film, I would have been very angry. It just... It wasn't good. The acting wasn't great. You didn't like Frenchie's random, not necessarily jokes, but light-heartedness in horrible it situations. It didn't belong in that situation because the, 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 the situations weren't horrible enough to warrant you having a joke. Like, it was just... It wasn't a good horror film for you to need a bit of, light relief, you know? It was... Like, some of the lines so sounded like an case. action from an action film. Like... Like an 80s action film with like Sylvester film. Stallone or, you know, Arnold. So what? Uh, what's your favourite horror film? I don't know, because I think there's so many, like, sub-genres of horror. Like, I mean, there's so many that I love. Well, I don't know much about horror films, but I, I love zombie films. So for me, Day of the Dead... See, that's a, that's a subgenre of yeah. horror. I mean, twenty eight days later, yeah. that all oh, good god, that scared me. Like, I love The Shining, which people yeah. say is horror. 
I don't know. Kind of a thriller horror. to me, I guess. It's like a psychological horror, yeah. I suppose. And I I love like all the like Stephen King adaptations, but Don't Breathe was good. Don't Breathe was good for a modern one. Get out. Get out was good. Oh, a quiet again, place. Like, a quiet place was quiet more place was brilliant. That was that was kind of more of a weird indie action flick in a way with horror elements. More than a straight up horror film. And like quite dramatic. I think that's kinda of how I like my horror, that it's that that's almost an afterthought to the rest of of the film. Yeah, but I did absolutely love at the time Scream. I think that's just a mm. classic slasher, isn't the it? First like, Scream. And even the second. At the, the, time, the second parodies the first one so well. Like if you were our age when it came out. Was that nineteen ninety six? Yeah. Like brilliant oh, because God. it hadn't really been done for a very long time. Was it Wes Craven? Yeah. He, so he was he was kind of parodying himself from before, wasn't he? With mm. with that, but I really liked it. And also having Drew Barrymore at the beginning killed off straight yeah. away. He was like, you, yeah, you but this is the star that. of the film, as I guess we were led to believe. She kind was of, the biggest kind of like, name, like Ned time. Stark in yeah. um, Game of Thrones. Like the yeah. whole thing was kind of built around him, and then all of a sudden. Gone. He's not in it. She, as far By as I way, knew about Scream, we're gonna have to like tag spoilers on this. To the tag to the spoiler alert. I don't know why, but some people might not have seen Game of Thrones yet. Or Scream. Or Scream. Everyone sees Scream. Everyone sees Scream. <laughs> yeah, like, I loved that. That was okay. kind of as I was aware of it. I thought Scream was going to be about Drew Barrymore, hmm. and then it just—I it, mean, it wasn't. It was Neve Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> and then some classics. I mean, like I. For a very long time, loved The Exorcist. I think I've seen it a bit too much now. Never seen it all the way through. Um, <laughs> but what are some other not good horror films? Oh, like Halloween. That was good at the time. Not that was here at the time. <laughs> <laughs> the I Omen. I, I think one of my things is I'm I'm that. not religious. No. So maybe this is another thing with the nun as well. We need a tripod, so yeah. sorry about the quality of this. Um, straight away, having a religious element to it detracts it from me. So I that love... That be the case for everyone, though. No. Some people... That's, 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 that's why I'm kind of explaining. Yeah. Like, I loved <clears throat> Wreck, the first film. And then Wreck 2, I did not like because they explained everything from Wreck as people were possessed by God demons and the devil and things like i i liked the first wreck as a zombie movie which this it was a zombie movie but they weren't zombies they were possessed by the devil and that straight away detracted it from me in a way it made it less believable to me than a zombie virus yeah like if you don't believe in god all this stuff happening in a convent to do with god and the devil it's not going to have much meaning to you because yeah. I don't believe in the devil. So it's not, it doesn't hit home for me. It's not like, oh my God, this is really scary. This could happen because I think the devil's real. Obviously for some people, that is their truth. Like I can suspend but... my disbelief. Like <laughs> I loved, uh, didn't really watch much of the series, but the, the comic of Preacher. Mm. So yeah. sometimes, I that's just brilliant. Yeah. Sometimes um, it, using religion is just a good setting for something but I didn't but if it's based on religion like the nun was based on yeah. religion it was based on the devil and supposedly a true story whatever. Um, yeah it's, it doesn't hold much meaning if you don't believe in the devil no um, and, and the jump scares weren't great and the story wasn't a story what well, about the acting weird. the acting was Nothing. It um, was all right. I wouldn't say there was anything bad. The girl in it was okay. I think. I think, like, if that was actually happening, you'd be a lot more terrified than they were portraying. Yeah. Like, what was with the weird snake things as well? Yeah. People who could keep like vomiting snakes. That was just another like. Oh, let's just throw that in there. Yeah. Let's just put some snakes in because people are scared of snakes. Yeah. Couldn't care I was like, quite excited at the beginning of, of the film when they went to the Vatican that Michael Smiley tires from Spaced was in it. That was the, probably the only thing I enjoyed about the film, recognising someone <laughs> who's done better work elsewhere. Um, so that was good. So for you, what was the best scene of the film? 
Michael Smiley from Space. Oh, no, yeah. um, the best scene, I, I guess. Oh. For me, the end credits when that hit, and I was like, "Oh my god, we can go home now." Fair. Now, for me, it was probably the bit with the guy in the coffin, just because claustrophobia is gross. Hashtag and... Max and Tanya and EastEnders. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I I can. That was probably the best bit, but it I was can really relate well to like, fearing claustrophobia and that kind of coming in on you. That's yeah, something that you can relate to, I suppose. But, yeah. Um, but then to but, me, they they ruined that by having things like clawing at him from in the coffin. Yeah. That should have just been scary enough, because to me, that's terrifying. And also, in the coffin, it was just a coffin. It was a coffin. Then he got out and there was loads of stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. Books. He was lying on books and all sorts of crap. Now, was it imaginary that there was nothing in there when he was in there? Or was it imaginary, or was it imaginary that there was stuff there? No, because no, he, was he was reading, reading books the book. later. Oh, did he imagine he that because it was all in his he head? He didn't even take them out. No. Also, the, the so the guy had performed an exorcism. As far as I could follow with this crap story, he performed an exorcism on story. a younger boy called Daniel good and name. good strong name all of a sudden that boy was everywhere as well like he hadn't been mentioned I mean he hadn't been seen until he was mentioned so did the nun spirit control that like she could see his subconscious what he was aware of or was that demon connected or was it all one demon or, or am I reading too much into that I don't I think, think it, I don't think it was clever I enough for that. I don't think it was. I think you're probably reading too much into it because I don't think that they they even thought of that. I think they just thought. Oh, that would be That's scary. That's something that he's worried about. Let's just put that in there as well, as well as well with the snakes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah Daniel vomited a snake, which chased after him. And put him in a coffin. Yeah. Hate it so when that, that happens. Weird. Also, <laughs> Frenchy. Go on. Ripped out a cross. Yeah. From the ground that was like... Um, I think that was meant to be kind of a light-hearted moment of like... I don't Whoa. like light-hearted moments in films like that. Like, I like light Like, it was in place in Scream, where it was a teen slasher movie. I'll be right back! Exactly. That whole moment, because it was so self-aware. Yeah. Like, th it didn't have a place in this film at all. No. Like, it just felt stupid. It just felt like it was, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even say it, it was taking something away from the film because there was nothing to hold it up anyway. There's not a great deal to take away. But no, I know, I know what you mean. I guess there, there's a time and a place for comic relief. And it I don't, I don't think. It anywhere. Yeah, I don't think that film needed it. Like, it wasn't like funny moments to to make you actually laugh but it was like a a sort of light moment in the film so basically he saw this nun that from the beginning hang herself again and then she chased after him and he fought her away and then he got up and just pulled up like a cross to like protect himself but it was done in a way Kind of like an off-the-cuff moment as a joke. Yeah, it was like, oh, I'll just take this to protect myself. Lol. Yeah. and If you were actually in that situation, you just leg there's it. nothing funny about it. You, you wouldn't think about that. You would literally just leg it. Because then they showed him with that later on in the bar. Yeah. So he had just gone to a pub to have a few drinks, just carrying a cross. I think that was actually the next night as well. Yeah. So he was just carrying this cross around the next night. Like, it was, it was kind of stupid. And, and... Two seconds previously, he'd been grappled to the floor by a nun with, like, fangs and scary-looking face and blood coming out of her eyes and all this crap. And and he was just like, oh, I'll just take this cross then and that'll protect me. <laughs> Time was stupid as well. Like, they, they showed bits clearly in the daylight and then cut to the next scene at the same time and it was just suddenly night time. Yeah, like, it would be, like, the next sentence that was said. Was, yeah. It was night time. And I know that happened, That does happen in films, but it seemed to just be kind of like... That was jarring to me, though, in yeah. that, though. Like, it does happen in films, <clears throat> and it's forgivable in films, but that was some just... Films. Some good, good films. Yeah. Yeah, with good films, you can kind of forgive them little things like that. There, there was, to me, the most jarring that's ever been in a film 
is, uh, and it's not a great film, X-Men 3, The Last Stand. So Magneto starts moving. Is it the Brooklyn Bridge or something? Yeah. And it's daylight and there's loads of cars on it. And all of a sudden in the next scene, it's dark and he's carrying on moving the bridge. But it's only gone like a few hundred metres. So it's something that he could have done in a matter of minutes but just time suddenly skipped hours. And you're completely aware of it. You're like... What's that happened? How, what? How did... Yeah. What? Because time w exists. Yeah. So you know about That's it. Deep. So, yeah, that happened a, an awful lot. Like, also, also, can I just say... You may. That <clears throat> we're supposed to have believed that they were there for three whole days. Yes. And there were three nights that had passed they only slept once but nothing really happened enough to fill up a day oh god nearly knocked my drink over nothing really happened enough to fill up a day no like okay this this sequence happened and that was five minutes long what did they do with the rest of the 20 it could have just been set over a, over a, a night and a, a day basically yeah because they were like to frenchy come back for us in a few days yeah and so he did, and in those th few days... All that happened in the next day happened. was the the nun in training went through <laughs> and <laughs> saw some other nuns and were told to pray. Then she went to bed that night. She It looked like she'd been asleep for about ten minutes, though, because um, she just kind of fell asleep, sat up, like dozed off, and... Um, it was still night time for a long time after that. Actually, that reminds me, the one the one thing I quite <clears throat> liked in the film, and I thought it could have been interesting, was when Frenchie showed them in... Frenchie showed them... So he, when they got to the church, he said he had moved the nun into, like, this cold storage room to, oh, yeah. to preserve her. And they, they got there, and she was set upright, and he said... That's not how I left her. I thought that was quite, a quite kind of not necessarily subtle, but a good way of saying that like things aren't quite what they seem. And I thought it could have been all right, but then. I mean, I think the fact that she suddenly fell from hanging. Well, so she lost her head when she hung, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. And then all of a sudden. She was whole again. She she had her you head. Can make me whole again. Oh my god. <laughs> she was suddenly whole again but yeah and and also you know the blood this was supposed to have happened weeks before they arrived and the blood was still blood and they made a point of they, they, they the mentioned it that hadn't though. dried and they mentioned that well that's a bit odd yeah which it is so i don't think they needed like i don't know why he put her in the cold store why didn't he knock on the nunnery door nunnery Church? convent door and be like do you know that you've got a person a dead body here? because there were still people in there obviously were and... there yeah were there though yeah were they were they not all imaginary because no because they burnt a body and there was ash on the floor okay there was okay maybe there was at least one actual body there the well, others might have all been imaginary well, mind you, you didn't see where they went did you no, I because I don't even care. Because she was praying with all these nuns, and they came in and were like, "Who are you? Who are you supposedly praying oh, yeah. with?" And there was but no the one there. The dead body was still there. Yeah, of an old nun. But it nun. was really old. Oh, I don't know. It was stupid. It was but stupid. But nothing was explained, and it didn't add to the like mystery of it. It was just like, hmm. Yeah. It just added to the confusingness. That's the word. Confusity. It... What is that word I'm looking for? Mystery. No, it's not mystery. It's confusing. It's added to the mess of nonsense. Mess will do. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't like, oh, that's weird how that happened. Oh, freaky. It was like, what? what how, why did that happen? So would you recommend this film to anyone? Never in a million years. Honestly, I'm not just saying it to be, like, dramatic and be like, oh, my God, it was rubbish for no reason. It was utter crap. Like, to, to me, religion, in a way, people who believe in God wouldn't care about going to see this film because it's not aimed at them, like churchgoers, I wouldn't have thought. I know lots of people, don't. it doesn't really matter that that's a thing. It's just 
a few jump scares, but it was it wasn't even that scary at, at all. No. I would you recommend it? No. So I asked what your favourite horror was. What would you say is the scariest horror you've ever seen? I'm really not. I'm not scared easily, am I? So I don't know. I mean, I've seen a lot of. I mean, I'm more scared at video games. Like At-last. video games are scary. That's like, scary because films, you're put think, in it. I don't know. I'm just not scared. Like scared isn't the right word. I mean, there's lots of jumpy bits in films. I think the most like scariest are the ones that get to you psych- psychologically. So I I watched Chucky, Charles Play, yeah. when I was like seven. And that freaked me out because I was seven and yeah. I still played with dolls. So the idea of a doll, like, coming after people was, like, the scariest thing yeah, but as an adult, in the world. Now, me, you know that Child's Play is actually kind of like a comedy horror. Like, it's more, it's kind of a piss take. It's not a real, I mean, it is a real horror, but, you know, they've done Bride of Chucky and that all sorts good. of I things. Like Never seen it. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of a joke more than anything but as a kid I related to it more and scared the poop out of me um yeah yeah so overall hated that trip to the cinema um we didn't even get Taco Bell normally when we go to the cinema we'll get Taco Bell like because we've got the unlimited tickets um sometimes we'll go see a film get Taco Bell go see another film I'm hoping to do that next week with Venom and A Star Is Born. Yeah, I really, I'm very much looking forward to both of those. Films. Yeah, so we can do drunken reviews of that next week. Or sober. Yes. Drunk. Um, not we'll have to advocating off. drinking, ch- children. No, but it does make life better, to an extent. To an extent. To an extent. It doesn't make life better. Okay, but it, it can just... make times better. Hashtag better. So, um, I guess we'll see you next time then. Bye. Love you. Bye.